Hey guys, today I want to talk about gay dating in New York City. So I've been, I feel like I could get like a, a PhD in this. I feel like I'm very well versed. I'm, I'm very experienced at this point. Um, not in a good way, like not in a way that like I've had so many relationships and everything. I've actually been in zero relationships. But in terms of like testing the waters and trying, I, I get a, a medal of honor for, for trying, for attempting, for effort. So I've been dating, trying to date, trying to navigate dating gay guys in the city for the past like five years or so. And consistently I've had the same experience over and over. So if you get nothing else from this video, the gist of it for me is that like gay dating in New York City doesn't really exist. It's a myth, it's a legend, just don't do it. It doesn't work. I know obviously that I'm being super cynical and skeptical. There are obviously gay, I know gay men who are in relationships or who have been in relationships in New York City. For whatever reason, my experiences have always been super bizarre. There are two main ways that I think you can meet gay men. Obviously there's, uh, there's always other avenues, but because I don't really have many gay friends at all, I have like one or two solid gay friends, I don't have the luxury of like meeting gay men through other gay men, which is I think probably the best and easiest and most consistent way that people meet, gay men meet significant others. I could be wrong, but I don't have that option, right? So that goes away. There's two main ways in my mind that you can meet other gay men. Gay bars and dating apps. And the reason is that you have to remember if you're a straight person watching this, I can't just approach somebody at Dwayne Reed or walking down the street or on the subway, you can't just like assume that somebody's gay. Also, that would make me feel weird to like take that risk and the person could be like, don't talk to me, like I'm not, <laughs> I'm not gay. But I'm also not even that forward that I would do that. In a gay bar, I feel a comfort level knowing that at least like 98% of the men there should be gay. And then on an app, obviously that's even easier because there if somebody's saying they're interested in men, they're interested in men. How you doing? Um, but interestingly, I when I first started going to bars, gay bars, I was when I was 21. That's all I did. I didn't do dating apps. And the reason was that at the time, I thought it was so superficial to go on these dating apps, and it didn't feel like me. And I, I'm such a romantic that I was like, I I want to meet somebody the authentic way in person and feel that chemistry, whether it's there or not. It just seemed kind of lame to me to go on dating apps. And it's so funny how things have evolved because I don't feel that way at all now. In fact, I feel the opposite. And I think it's also because at the time there was a stigma around, in the beginning there was there was a stigma around like, you know, Match.com and eHarmony and then eventually Tinder and, and all these other apps. Um, even Grindr for the longest time, I was like, I refused to use this because it felt so superficial, so surface and so sexualized that it, I, it didn't feel like the right thing for me. Of course, now I've given up and I, I use all the apps. But in the beginning, I was only going to bars. And I met some interesting guys. I would say the most interesting men I've ever met, I've met at bars. I've met Ivy League educated men. I've met incredibly successful men, whether it was doctors, lawyers, um, CEOs, vice presidents, like people who have substance, people who are ambitious, people who are intelligent. I have met several men who I was like super interested in and they expressed that they were interested in me as well. And it would always lead to like a long night of talking at a bar or whatever, a really nice chemistry, like nothing shady, nothing sexual, even like very old school. And then we would exchange numbers and we would text. And over and over, I've had this experience of like the nonstop texting. And it's like, I'm not looking for a pen pal. You know what I mean? Like, okay, I get it that you want to maybe feel me out first and get to know me better via text for a week, maybe. But after that, like, it should go to the next stage. And for me, what's always been disheartening is that I've noticed this consistent thing where eventually the interest fades on the other person's part after the first few weeks of texting. And I think it's because they forget. They forget about the experience in person of feeling that chemistry and how 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 genuine it felt. It, it goes back to this idea that we're really just like sexual creatures and that after that in-person chemistry isn't there anymore, like it's, 
it's faded because you haven't seen the person, they kind of forget about you. And I could be wrong, it could just be my theory. But that's always been my impression. And I know what you're going to say, you can make the effort as well. And eventually I've learned that I can do that, although I don't like it because I get turned off by passive men. I have learned to also say, hey, want to do this? Like, want to meet up then? But my experience, again, has been that even when I do that, something happens, right? Like last minute, the person's like, I can't meet up today. Sometimes I don't even get a reason from them. But they can't meet up. There's some excuse, which shit happens. I get it. But then I feel like if it's your fault, you should set up the next date. Like you should fix it and offer another time. But I can't tell you how many times I've had a guy schedule a time with me to meet up for a drink or whatever. And then the last minute, they're like, I can't make it. That's it. It stops there. There's no effort to plan for another time. So eventually I, I finally started the dating apps. In the beginning, it was actually like a huge confidence boost for me because I was like, wow, all these men are interested in me who look so different from me, different races, different ages different whatever different just different life experiences it was cool but then the same thing that happens to a lot of people started happening to me which is that despite the fact that you match on all these different um, apps which proves that they're attracted to you if nothing else superficially they're attracted to you you're attracted to them most of most of them wouldn't respond some of them respond but like with the most curt responses that are such a turn off the the you know like, I would reach out and say, hey, how are you? Like, I noticed you like this, like, really cool. I like that, blah, blah, blah. To show that, like, you, you're you making an effort and you actually read the stuff that they posted. And it's just such a disappointment when you do that. And then the person responds and they're like, and you see on your phone, right? Like, you got a message. You're like, oh, this person responded. And you check and they're like, hey. Hey, or like, sup? I'm like, can't you give me more? And the thing is, I understand that if you're going a superficial route, you're likely to get superficial results, right? Like if you're using a dating app, it's so easy to set up an account. It's so easy to put up your pictures. I understand that people wouldn't put in um, that much that much time and, and wouldn't really care that much. But it's still like disheartening when some of us actually care and are wanting to put in effort and you don't get that back, right? So basically for me, gay dating in New York City has been a combination of going to bars and using these apps, but I've consistently had the same experience of like, it just doesn't even make its way to a first date most of the time. It's, sometimes it's a lot of talk about a first date or meeting up, and then it just doesn't happen. Part of my reason that I'm going to leave New York City in 2018 next year is, is because of this. Like, if you keep having the same experience over and over, eventually something's got to give, right? Like, what, what do people always say? Like, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and thinking you're going to get different results. I think, first off, I don't think that's insanity. I think it's just, like, stupidity. And I think most people do that because they're lazy and they're passive and they don't care enough. But I care enough. So part of my reason for moving is that I, I want to at least see if this experience of dating other gay men is the same... Um, in other places like it is is this a New York City thing or is it a gay thing and I, t I know from talking to some of my straight friends that they have similar experiences they're like it's not even just a gay thing it's just a people thing it's just a man thing it's just a a, a, a young a 20 something thing um, so stay tuned when I move I will definitely be doing a comparison of the different cities